Welcome to the Hologram Podcast. This is Dr. George Gonzalez. And are you congruent down to the element? That's our conversation today. And it's based on a principle that I invented uh, that we call nervous system congruence. Uh, this was originally called allergy. And, you know, we changed the name to nervous system congruence because of the concepts uh, that we're working with are not uh, allergy concepts. They're not IgG, IgE uh, type levels of, of analysis. So we changed it to a neurological based concept, which is nervous system congruence. And this is uh, an analysis we do using neurology to evaluate if somebody's nervous system is congruent with their own body, with other things in their environment, whether it be foods or, or otherwise, but also down to the element. And today I have uh, our guest who's a foremost expert in this concept of applying elements to this principle of nervous system congruence, we have Dr. James Sheen. Welcome to the Hologram Podcast, Dr. James. How are you today? I'm doing great. How's Dr. George in the wonderful California? You know, we're doing good out here. Just uh, looking forward to seeing you soon out in Nebraska sometime. And today we're talking about, uh, you know, are you congruent down to the element? Now, the principle within nervous system congruence is to make sure that our nervous system, uh, for those that may not be familiar with the concepts, uh, is strong. Our nervous system is strong in the presence of any stimulus. And so, you know, in the concept of strong, we neurologically call that in inhibited. So when the nervous system is inhibited in the presence of, of something, uh, that's not good. We want to strengthen the nervous system in the presence of a stimulus. And that stimulus could be anything. It could be uh, a, a food. It could be a, uh, a product. It could be a, uh, a, a, an element that we're talking about today. It can even be a thought process. If the nervous system is not congruent, it's going to start collapsing neurologically. And so when we do this analysis, uh, we have uh, principles that we do are that we affect the body to itself first. So we make the nervous system congruent to its own self first, and then we start going into external environment. And that's where we uh, come in to talk with James about the elements. So Dr. James, how do you see this whole principle, uh, first of all, and then how did you bring the elements into it? So the, the idea of rolling this all together I was sitting there, uh, I was at one of the seminars and we were talking about, uh, everybody was offended. Everybody was like, oh, I don't like how this is. I don't like how that is. I would like to see, um, we need to make this, we gotta make it better. And, and some of this stuff is not within our capacity to technically change, you know, um, it's, or it's, it's a slow uh, shift. and. I was trying to figure out how to take and make it so that the world would be less stressful and, and we can't always make it bigger, but how about we sit down and we start making it smaller. And, and by making it smaller, we actually made it bigger because we took it to the level of atomic. Let's make it congruent. We need to be okay with it. Well, we need to be okay with carbon. We need to be okay with calcium. When you're sitting down, and most of the time, if you'd sit down and say, I need you to go take some calcium because of this or this or this, the fundamental principle is we need to be able to take that item, the calcium, we're going to put it in your mouth, you're going to eat it, and then you're going to disperse it into your bloodstream. The bloodstream is going to disperse it then to those uh, peripheral nerves, into those muscle bellies. And the car calcium is like sitting down and saying, hey, I, how much gas do I actually have? Where's my throttle position and how fast is my car going to go? But what I found was, is that there's a lot of people that you're muscle testing them, setting down saying you need to take 27 calcium today. And what really comes down to is the left side of your body can't apply calcium accurately. It breaks down. The muscle, the myotome evaluation, it just doesn't happen. Uh, and so the delivery process of getting it from your mouth into your bloodstream is one thing, but once it's in your bloodstream, can you actually apply that calcium 
within a muscle belly? Uh, can you feed that uh, nerve? And can you, uh, and I get really wound up about it, but I get excited because it is the nervous system that we're fussing with because there is a correlation that I figured out. Uh, there, is, there was some inspiration that turned into a perspiration event uh, where we got it all kind of, and we started tying it together. Um, it, there is a, uh, I'm going to call it a symbiotic relationship that there are senses, the, the senses for what we learn in quantum neurology of sensory corrections, pain, temperature, vibration, light touch, deep touch, pressure, proprioception, and form recognition are key and integral in how your body identifies those elemental events. You know, it's, it's fascinating just as a concept uh, alone, but you know, when we talk about <clears throat> having a incongruence to carbon, or having an incongruence to calcium or uh, to you know phosphorus or, or any of the elements that, that we're dealing with, uh, what does that look like? What does that present like in the patient, neurologically speaking, 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 speaking? And what does that like in their life? How does that affect their life? Well, uh, let's pick a really simple one. Let's sit down and say uh, the person is complaining of having uh, cramps in their left calf. And they went to their, their practitioner. Uh, they've been doing stretches. It doesn't seem to work. We sat down and said, they went to their nutrition specialist. They sat down and they did some evaluation. They said, oh, you need some more potassium. You're not uh, getting this done. You need more potassium in your bloodstream. And, and I can understand within that realm of what they're saying. But the other side of the coin is, is the same thing. If it's in your bloodstream that you're having the difficulty, then why is, is there a delivery error? Why isn't the right calf cramping up? Why aren't you having a palsied event when you sleep with your right hand? Those things don't actually have a technical difficulty. It's only within that muscle belly. And as you would teach us, we're gonna look at the nerve root of S1, L5, L4. And you can, because I had, uh, I had a sensory, I had a kit created, and it had been assembled, you know, previously in pieces, but kind of taking the whole entire periodic table and having that available, and then setting down and saying, we're going to go uh, check the myotome, we're going to figure out which of the elements, um, and I've streamlined it over the course of time to make it so that it's, it's a quick event, and then when you tie in the uh, sensory ability over the uh, appropriate uh, myotome, the, the S1, the L5, whatever nerve root that we're working on. Um, I mean, that, that one's like a bread and butter. I, I'll take bets on that one. Uh, because you go in and you make that sensory correction because fundamentally there is an inhibition that will not allow that calcium or the potassium to get into or out of that, that muscle. Right. It's not, it's not a delivery problem within the bloodstream. It's that the, the, the end user won't take it. Now, as, as a concept, you know, like other techniques out there may focus on the top 10 foods uh, to, to work. Uh, in quantum neurology, we focus first on the person's own body uh, fluids, and, and then we work outward. When we're talking about the elements, which elements do you feel are you know, the top issues that you see or the, you feel that should be handled first? Um, let's see. Um, there'd be like a, maybe like a top 25. I'm just yeah. sitting here peeking over my shoulder. I got a periodic table on the wall. And, you know, that, yeah, they're going to be over there. I'm just trying to remember. I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head. Um, but that's where you'd wind up over there uh, a little bit past uh, the chlorides, like the bromines. There are certain ones that seem to hit the most. And from a standpoint of how you take 
and where you're going to spend most of your time living is the, that first top 25. It's over there next to the, the bromines and the chlorines. Right. Uh, because the sodium, the potassium, uh, how you apply hydrogen, uh, you know, that's a 7.2 on Howard Cohn. Uh, you know, hats off to that boy and how and getting hydrogen uh, as a fuel source for the body. Uh, but you can't believe how many people can't do it. I mean, one of the things that I fix uh, daily is for people that have stomach acid problems. And it's really easy if you sit down and just say, let's check and see how they're handling their acid levels, which is basically how much free hydrogen is, is present. Wow, that's fascinating. You know, it's truly endless because, uh, you know, everything comes down to the element. And when you're looking at the nervous system through those eyes, as opposed to, you know, the, the larger concepts that we're taught in school, even when it comes down to nutrients and, and those things, we're not talking about the elements on the nutrient sense, even though some elements are nutrients, we're talking about the building blocks of life. And, and how is your body, uh, is your body congruent with that el specific element? It's absolutely fascinating. And I absolutely love the work. Uh, we're going to uh, be teaching this uh, principle of nervous system congruence, uh, save the date and register. On January 17th and 18th, we, we have a technique we call GMRT, Gonzalez Muscle Reset Technique, where we lengthen uh, any major muscle in the body within seconds. And on the second half of that weekend, January 18th and 19th, we're teaching nervous system congruence. And Dr. James Sheen is, is uh, kind enough. He's going to be there and he's going to share uh, a little time uh, on this principle and share the concepts uh, that he's worked on over, over the years and do some demonstrations. Uh, very excited to have you there, James. Could you uh, just give us a little highlight of, of the demonstrations that we're going to be doing? Um, as we sat there and we, uh, you know, you don't want to, you got to have a tease there for those people. You're sitting down and saying, uh, we got to be able to, we need to. Uh, you with uh, great levels of passion need to be congruent with everything. Your saliva, your tears, uh, you stand back and you start fixing those people and trying to take and eliminate stress and you need to start at home uh, with yourself. And as we get to the atomic level, uh, you know, it becomes a question of uh, your bones, the structure upon which you stand. Uh, we do this, we wind up in some levels uh, doing some very unique stuff with heavy metal and the toxicity sides of things. The other side is the, uh, the more uh, baseline fundamentals and, and just being able to step down and say with the skill sets that we're gonna learn and recover uh, because they were lost. They've been uh, compromised, they've been, we've been adapting and compromised. And by sitting down and working our way through that, that uh, day and a half seminar, uh, this needs to be part of your package. We're gonna cover those uh, events and look at it from that, um, uh, the big picture of the atomic level. Uh, you were talking about that at the, the homecoming this year. And I think that got everybody a, a little bit excited but I really, get, I really like the way that we take the atomic level and we take those elementals and we sit down and say, I think your body identifies them by sensory corrections. And I know that it works because we've been doing it. And it's a really, uh, it's a little hard for some people to wrap their heads around, but being able to sit down and say, how do we take and integrate pressure? How do we take and make proprioceptive errors uh, no longer have an error. And, um, it, it's fascinating because it's, it's hard to identify the, the exact way this is shifting, but it is shifting. And, you know, it's, it's, we, we know because neurologically the person is becoming congruent with what we're testing them for. And, and that creates a shift in the nervous system that's, that's desirable and, and uh, oftentimes it's directly uh, experienced by the patient. 
uh, and sometimes in a tremendous way. It's not just this subtle, subtle thing. It could it could light somebody up pretty pretty interestingly, right? Yes, the uh, you know when you sat down and you uh, like I was working on somebody this morning and we were having a conversation about how the sensitivity uh, and it was very unique because it was only on the right side of the body that they were at a five or a six pain level on the periosteum of the bone, and it was a it was a uh, a proprioceptive error. Uh, for a one of the elements, and it doesn't quite qualify as a as a toxic event, but it's a it's a heavy one. And I, we sat down, we worked our way through it, and it made a shift. And you call them arcs, you know. The people that have participated in the class can feel that uh, that release and that energetic shift that occurs. And you're taking a person that went from a seven down to a two. And it went just like a breeze across the shoulder. It was that quick, that fast. And then they're confused. And they're, and they're like, well, but this is how, you know, what do you mean? I need 27 visits or something to get there? And I'm like, no, uh, but it's going to shift. And it did. And those, those sudden shifts, those suddenlies are the, the, one of those things that just happens with the light therapy and the quantum neurology. Uh, what's funny is when you have a patient that is your patient and they walk in and they say, hey doc, here's my problem. And and you're going, I haven't seen one of these before. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm scratching my head and my hair is going, oh, I'm gonna lose a couple more on this one. And then you do it and they expect it because it's that, uh, it's that pronounced uh, modification. I, I like the word, uh, I want you to change your mind. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes we change the mind. When you're working with a stroke patient and you know that the damage happened inside of that head and then you change their mind because it was numb. I call the, the, the word that I like to use is that you are neurologically numb to that bandwidth that was, let's say, vibration or or pressure. And when they get it back, when you make a sensory correction on, on the cranial nerve and the peripheral nervous system on that whole entire one side of the body is restored. I mean... That's a wow. It's definitely a wow. Yeah. That, you know, it's it, it becomes so amazing, you know, it, and people have a hard time understanding how profound these shifts could be. We have no way of predicting which correction is going to make that level of a shift for somebody. Uh, we can't promise or guarantee that, but we see these things consistently. We see, we often see shifts happen in patients that are tremendously profound. And, you know, that, it's, it's one of those things, you have to come to the, the seminar, you have to experience firsthand. You have to see how your body congruence makes a difference in your, your health, and also how, um, how going down to the element level could affect changes in your nervous system. Uh, Dr. James, uh, what would you like to say to the doctors out there uh, to tell them to be there this, on, on January 18th and 19th? Well, Way back in the day, when I first started taking classes, the, the class was, I think was referred to, was the allergy. Back then, um, yeah. Back then, and it was one of the first ones that I took, and I bought the DVD for, because we had so many people that have allergies uh, in the family. Uh, you know, we used it, every, we use it every day. It's a... We use the principles, the concepts, uh, the big stretch. And, and I, I like to use the word, it's a big stretch because it's, some of it is a, a, a concept phase. We can step through the hoops, but on the other scale, intellectually, you know that it's gonna happen. And, and when you see it happen here, it's gonna happen on the big scale. Right. You know? It's, it's a big thing. You might sit down and say, well, the arm went weak and now the arm is strong and did it change? But the answer is, is but it changed everything. We, we don't, we're not gonna work with the uh, old person anymore. I, 
like to tell this to the patients. When I'm working on somebody, I make sensory corrections first because that's the new man and I'm going to support it. I'm not going to go back and try to take and put lipstick on the pig and make it just more of this. I'm going to take and work on the new man because we took and we changed who we were. It, it's fascinating. Absolutely. I love it. And, um, you know, Dr. James, we look forward to seeing you at the event and we invite doctors to uh, save the date and register. Uh, the way you register is you're going to go to, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, you're going to go to quantumneurology.com and, uh, or follow the links below and you could uh, go to the doctor locator or the doctor seminar information and you could follow the links and register there as it's, there you go. So you follow the links and, and register here. And also please visit us here on the hologram podcast on YouTube. Uh, you can check out all the other videos that, uh, and interviews that we've had. And also please uh, check out our newest book. I am loving myself, healthy physician, heal thyself uh, by Dr. Edward Chauvin and myself, uh, number one new hot release on Amazon. Please check it out. It's two ninety nine at this moment in time. Uh, please do the exercise, the hummingbird exercises, reverse your sympathetic dominance and strengthen your parasympathetic uh, side of your nervous system for advanced healing. Uh, Dr. James, you have a comment on the hummingbird concept. Oh, that's been, uh, we've been having a lot of fun and the uh, setting down, uh, helping those people uh, work on it. And, and, you know, I had seen the, the prototypes and the, the, primo, the preliminary uh, rollouts with some of those, those things that we've worked with, but um, having Ed sat down and show us how to do it with the chair. I, I love that uh, because I've had some people that just had, you know, so uh, uh, delicate states that they can't do up standing. Their one guy's in a wheelchair and I'm going, okay, then put your feet on the blocks and sit there and I want you to do this. And that's going to be the thing that starts to get you. You got to be able to take and push those events. It puts you into it and, and breaks that cycle of sympathetic dominance. It gives you the ability to do it once, twice, you know, do it at three or five or eight, 10 times a day. You need to be able to take and take that home and own it and let that person be able to do those things uh, because they can't see, they can't stop in to see us daily or hourly. So bring it home, let them do it and, and watch that nervous system really allow uh, for the full expression to come, uh, to come forth. It's, it's absolutely amazing what we've been seeing with um, myself, my family, and also the, the people we've been teaching these exercises to. Uh, in my, myself and my family, we sleep better, sleep through the night, uh, better digestion. It's, you know, you're exercising the rest, digest, detoxify, and healing actions of your body. And you're balancing out from that sympathetic dominance. It's absolutely amazing. Please check it out on Amazon. And with that, we're going to finish up. Dr. James, how do people get a hold of you? How do people uh, that want to see you as a patient get a hold of you and, and uh, come to your office? Uh, I'm located in Kearney, Nebraska. Uh, the office phone number is area code 308-236-2134. I do have a Facebook uh, link for Sheen Family Chiropractic. Uh, you can go and leave a message there also. And do you have a website? Um, it's kind of an old school that it doesn't really, you know, technologically. <laughs> use the Facebook. Use the Facebook. Yeah, use the Facebook. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. Dr. James, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Amazing conversation. I look forward to seeing you uh, on the weekend of seven, the 17th through the 19th of January for the events. And we hope to see you there too. And uh, thank you all. God bless you and your families. And we'll talk to you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, George.